All right, so a very good evening, everyone. So I welcome you all to this particular YouTube session. So I am myself, Dr. Rajesh Guba. I'm the general medicine educator on an academy platform. Yes, hi, Mudasir. So in the upcoming days, I will be discussing a very high yield topics for FMG. And uh, as you have seen the previous FMG question papers, there was much concentration on the image based questions. So every day at 5 p.m. for half an hour until your exams, I'll be discussing the image based questions in general medicine. So in the image based questions, I will be taking up one particular system every day. So today I am starting with the cardiology. Right. So today all the image based questions will be on cardiology. So let us start with the first image based question in cardiology. So it will be exclusively image based sessions. Right. So the purpose is that because in your upcoming FMG exams, there is a lot of concentration on the image based questions. So keeping that point into consideration, I am trying to discuss as many as the image based questions every day. Right. So the first question, ingestion of the product shown in photograph can lead to hyperkalemic alkalosis, hypokalemic alkalosis, hypokalemic acidosis, hyperkalemic acidosis. Yes, so let me see who will be the first person to answer this question. Ingestion of the product shown in photograph can lead to So first of all, you should be able to identify this particular product. So what is this? These are <coughs> The sticks of liquorice. Okay, very good. Uh, so Krutika Narolia has answered it correctly. So it is hypokalemic alkalosis. Yes, these are your liquorice sticks. Now, can anyone tell me what is the use of these particular liquorice sticks? What is the use of this particular liquorice sticks? Remember, this particular liquorice sticks, where are they being used? They are being used in respiratory disorders like asthma. Right? The extract of that particular liquorice. And they are used in gastrointestinal disorders like gastroesophageal reflux disease. Right? And they are also used in peptic ulcers. Okay? So these are some of the biological uses of the extract of the liquorice. But remember, this particular liquorice, it contains a substance called glycerzin. Right? This contains a substance called glycerzin. When the large doses of the liquorice root is being con consumed, that will lead to this glycerzin accumulation. Now, what does this glycerzin will do? 
glycerin will increase the levels of the cortisol right glycerin will increase the levels of the cortisol now when the cortisol levels are increased let me tell you there will be electrolyte abnormalities now what are those electrolyte abnormalities that can happen because of the consumption of this particular the liquorice in excess quantity this cortisol in excess quantity whenever it is being produced or whenever it is increased in our body they have the physiological action similar to that of the aldosterone now what does this aldosterone do aldosterone remember it will cause sodium retention right and because of which there will be high blood pressure and it will cause potassium excretion there will be hypokalemia and because of hypokalemia there will be muscle weakness and this aldosterone will also cause h plus ion excretion okay so because of increased h plus ion excretion the individual will end up in what is called alkalosis right the individual will end up in what is called alkalosis so hypokalemic alkalosis is the abnormality what you will have due to excessive consumption of this particular liquorice sticks okay so excessive consumption of this particular extract of the liquorice sticks will make the individual to land up in what is called hypokalemic alkalosis and why is that due to accumulation of a substance called glycerin what the glycerin will do glycerin will increase the levels of the cortisol what the cortisol will do in when in increased quantities this cortisol will cause sodium and water retention potassium excretion and h plus ion excretion and that makes the individual to land up in hypokalemic alkalosis all right so this is about the excessive consumption of this particular liquorice stick what is the abnormality next we will move on to the next question yes this is another very important question association of the condition shown in photograph include all except turner syndrome down syndrome ventricular septal defect patent ductus arteriosus right first of all you should be able to diagnose this condition can anyone tell me what is the diagnosis the question asked is except yes krish patel the question asked is except yes krish patel can you tell me first of all what is the diagnosis any one of you what is the diagnosis first very good krish patel so it is your coactation of iota hmm? it is your coactation of iota now in which of the following conditions the coactation of iota is not associated remember the coactation of iota is not seen in case of the down syndrome right in case of down syndrome so down syndrome you don't have the coactation of iota right coactation of iota is absent in the down syndrome whereas in turners you will have coactation of iota vsd and pda there can be association of the coactation of iota now i wanted to ask you people can you tell who will tell me what are the cardiac problems in down syndrome yes what are the cardiac disorders in down syndrome any one of you please what are the cardiac disorders associated with the down syndrome now let me just give you the list of very good excellent so number 1 endocardial cushion defect what is that that is atrioventricular septal defect that is one of the very important cardiac disorder associated with the down syndrome now apart from that there can be association of there can be development of vsd pda and tetralogy of fallow okay so these are the cardiac problems or the heart defects that can be seen in patients with the down syndrome but these patients with the down syndrome you don't have the coactation of iota right you don't have the coactation of iota all right next now what was the other congenital disorder which one is asked that is about the turner syndrome yeah so please tell me 
what is the cardiac problems associated with the turner syndrome yes any one of you what are the cardiac problems associated with the turner syndrome yes who will be the first person very good so turner syndrome it is associated with the coarctation of aorta any other krishtarun apart from the uh, coarctation of aorta do you these patients with turners do they have any other cardiac problems very good very good mohit vyas so with turner syndrome there can be bicuspid aortic valve that will lead to congenital aortic stenosis right and there can be coarctation of aorta that is what we have shown in our image also and there can be aortic arch anomalies and other defects may be anomalous pulmonary venous connection right anomalous pulmonary venous connection what does that mean this pulmonary veins normally they have to get connected into the left atrium right they have to get connected into left atrium but in case of the anomalous pulmonary venous connection these pulmonary veins they enter or they open into your they open into your superior vena cava okay so that is what is your anomalous pulmonary venous connection so going back to the question now so remember coarctation of aorta can be seen in association with the turners can be seen in association with the vsd can be seen in association with the P pda but the question asked is except so in down syndrome you will not have the coarctation of aorta in down syndrome you can have the cushion defects that is av cushion defects atrioventricular cushion defects there can be vsd there can be pda and tetralogy of fallow these are the cardiac problems that can be seen in down syndrome all right next we will see next image based question right physician shown in the photograph is known as father of ultrasonography father of mri father of ct scan father of medicine yes krish tarun very good excellent krish tarun who is he krish tarun who is he what is his name who is the father of medicine socrates sir <laughs> right so is your hippocrates right so is your hippocrates okay so yeah now you should also be very much aware who is the father of ultrasonography who is the father of the mri who is the father of the ct scan right now acha it's okay uh, krish sir it's okay fine but don't uh, commit the same mistake in your exam also here it is fine right so you should be very much aware who is father of mri who is the father of ct scan who is the father of uh, ultrasonography right so sometimes to trouble you they may ask you these type of questions so father of ultrasonography j wild john j wild father of mri raymond father of ct scan godfrey hounsfeld so these are the fathers of ultrasonography mri and as well as the ct scan but the image which has been shown to us here is the father of medicine he is none other than hippocrates right he is none other than hippocrates okay right right now you see the next question abdomen must be compressed for how much duration for the reflex to appear which reflex the reflex is given in your photograph you see the vision of these individual he is observing something in the neck and you see the hand of these individuals he is compressing something over the abdomen now abdomen must be compressed for how long to appear this particular reflex 1 to 5 seconds 5 to 10 seconds 10 to 15 seconds 1 to 2 minutes so first of all what is this reflex very good biswas so it is your hepatojugular reflex right it is your hepatojugular reflex okay so you should have uh, the the mistake in the image is that right the mistake in the image is that he should have compressed by standing on the right side of the patient not on the left side of the patient 
okay that is one of the mistake of this particular image okay but okay but what is asked in your question in your question for how long you need to compress over the abdomen that is what is the question right yes so who has answered this question correctly is krish patil has answered this question correctly very good krish patil so you have to compress the abdomen for nearly around 10 to 15 seconds right you have to compress the abdomen nearly or around 10 to 15 seconds so when you compress the abdomen for nearly around 10 to 15 seconds what will happen to your jvp right what will happen to your jvp the jvp will increase transiently right the jvp will increase transiently okay only transiently and immediately it will return to the baseline right immediately it will return to the baseline that is what is called as negative hepatojugular reflex or normal individual so negative hepatojugular reflex it is considered as normal right negative hepatojugular reflex it is considered as normal but on applying the pressure over the abdomen for nearly around 10 to 15 seconds if the jvp it increases more than 3 centimeters right if the jvp increases more than 3 centimeters then we call it as a positive hepatojugular reflex and this jvp which is increased for more than 3 centimeters it should have been sustained for how much time it should have been sustained it should have been sustained for more than 15 seconds right it should have been sustained for more than 15 seconds so that is what is called as the hepatojugular reflex right that is what is called as a positive hepatojugular reflex now okay so please tell me what are the conditions where you will have a positive hepatojugular reflex any one of you what are the conditions where you will have a positive hepatojugular reflex so remember you will come across this positive hepatojugular reflex in conditions like left ventricular failure why because left ventricular failure this is the most common cause of right heart failure okay actually you will have this positive hepatojugular reflex in right heart failure but whenever there is left ventricular failure that will lead to right heart failure okay next right heart failure you will have positive hepatojugular reflex then constrictive pericarditis right ventricular infarction and restrictive cardiomyopathy so these are the conditions which are associated with the abdominal jugular reflex or positive hepatojugular reflex okay right yeah yes krish tarun what we you are asking about the pulmonary hypertension right and mudasir is asking about the pulmonary stenosis see pulmonary hypertension or pulmonary stenosis both of them they will make the individual to land up in right heart failure ultimately right both of them they will make the individual to land up in right heart failure ultimately so now remember this that is abdomen must be compressed for 10 to 15 seconds for the reflex to appear see everyone was able to tell me what are the conditions where you will have positive hepatojugular reflex but only one student krish patil has only answered that you have to compress for 10 to 15 seconds so most of the times in exams what will happen is we try to concentrate on one thing that this may appear in your exam but exactly the other one which we have given least concentration will start appearing in the exam so that makes the exam very very difficult okay so whenever you are preparing try to concentrate on each and every point of your notes whatever you have written so that you will not miss any single question in your upcoming exam okay and let me tell you another important point whatever i am doing this fmg revision youtube sessions i am completely concentrating on image based questions but remember i am also doing the fmg sessions revision sessions on unacademy also unacademy app there are special sessions that are free hours free sessions until now i have finished 18 sessions on unacademy uh, 
app that is unacademy learning app under my category or in the sense in the neat pg category if you go to my profile you will get nearly around 18 sessions of fmg revision and in majority of the sessions i have tried to discuss the clinical based questions so please don't miss that clinical based questions on unacademy learning app which i have done fmg revision sessions they are all special classes that means they are free sessions everyone can watch those sessions please utilize this and clear your fmg exam definitely this time all right next now we will move on to the next question right we will move on to the next question you see the next question yeah see krishtarun uh, one important tip what i will give you is getting anxiety while attempting the question let me tell you the point when you get the anxiety you are going to lose the exam so keep that in mind whether you have to lose the exam or whether you have to win over the exam so whenever you get the anxiety attacks while you are reading the questions please keep in your mind if i become anxious when i am reading the questions i am about to lose this exam so i myself should remain calm so keep that in mind and then attempt your questions okay right severe stenosis of the valve shown in photograph correlate with loud opening snap loud s1 duration of mid diastolic murmur intensity of mid diastolic murmur right so can anyone tell me diagnosis first please tell me the diagnosis then i will tell you the answer please tell me the diagnosis right so the only student who has answered is krishtarun only krishtarun has answered this question very good febin shazi diagnosis is mitral stenosis right diagnosis is mitral stenosis so in mitral stenosis how will you assess the severity of mitral stenosis there are two parameters which will assess the severity of mitral stenosis what are those two parameters number 1 duration of the mid diastolic murmur so more is the duration of the mid diastolic murmur more severe right more severe is mitral stenosis okay right and a to os gap this is another parameter which will decide the severity of the mitral stenosis so narrower or closer is a to os gap right narrower or closer a to os gap severe is your mitral stenosis right severe is your mitral stenosis okay right whereas longer is the gap less severe is your mitral stenosis so a to os gap and duration of the murmur right these are the two things which will decide the severity of the mitral stenosis and duration of what murmur in mitral stenosis what you will have is a mid diastolic murmur at the apex right you will have mid diastolic murmur at the apex okay so it is the duration of the murmur and as well as the a to os gap which will decide the severity assessment of mitral stenosis all right next now we will move on to the next question yes this is another very interesting question diagnosis of the underlying medical disorder by ecg change in photograph <clears throat> diagnosis of underlying medical disorder by ecg change in photograph so you see the ecg and you tell me what is the electrolyte abnormality which you will see hypokalemia hyperkalemia hypercalcemia hypocalcemia
Okay, Mohit, we are set B. Okay, okay. Now, first of all, let me ask you people, what is the abnormality in the ECG? Yes, what is the abnormality in the ECG given to you? Any one of you, please? What is the abnormality in the ECG? Then you comment on the You don't have U wave. Where is U wave? You don't have U wave at all. Nasir Khan. Hmm? There is no U wave. Very good, Mohit Vyas. So, what is that you are having is the QT prolongation. So, QT interval is prolonged. Huh. Now, you tell me. QT interval, where is it prolonged? Hmm. Yes, Fabin Shazi and Mohit Vyas. Now, please tell me what is the condition where you will have QT prolongation? Right, so Fabin Shazi has answered and as well as Krish Tarun, both of you have answered it correctly. So, very good Fabin Shazi. So, that is hypocalcemia. Very good Deepin. So, in hypocalcemia, in hypocalcemia, you will have QT prolongation. Is that clear? So, you take the normal QT interval. Normal QT interval is around 380 to 440 milliseconds. Right, normal QT interval is 380 to 440 milliseconds. And if you take the QT interval of our patient, right, if you take the QT interval of our patient, now the Q wave is here and T wave is at this point. So how many large, box, large boxes is occupied? Almost like three large boxes are occupied. So one large box, it is how much? 200 milliseconds. So, three large boxes means how much it becomes around 600 milliseconds. Right? Three large boxes means it comes around 600 milliseconds. Okay? So, there is very significant QT prolongation whatever you are seeing. Hmm? You, are have, you are seeing a very significant QT prolongation. Right? Next. Now, now you take the other uh, electrolyte abnormalities. In hypokalemia, you will have U wave and you will have flat T wave. Right, you will have flat T wave. Whereas in hyperkalemia, you will have tall T wave. Right, you will have tall T wave. Whereas in hypercalcemia, you will have a short QT interval. Right, you will have short QT interval. Whereas in hypocalcemia, you will have long QT interval. Right, you will have long QT interval. Okay, so this is what you will see in the various electrolyte abnormalities. Okay, so hypokal uh, hypokalemia, U wave and flat T wave and hyperkalemia, you will have the presence of tall T wave and hypercalcemia, short QT interval, hypocalcemia, long QT interval. Now, yes, Krish Tarun is asking, sir, how to differentiate U wave and subsequent P wave? See, this is your P, this is your QRS complex. Let me just use the other color. Right, so this is your P wave, this is your QRS complex, and this is your T wave. After T wave, actually what should come, you should have P wave only. But in between T wave and P wave, if there is any small positive deflection, then you think this as the U wave. Right, after T wave, what should you have actually? The TP segment. Right, you should have the TP segment. In this TP segment, if you have any positive deflection, this is what is your U wave. Uh, normally, you don't have U wave. Normally, you don't have U wave. So, after T wave, you will, any positive wave will be P wave. But in between T wave and P wave, if you have an additional positive deflection, that will become your U wave. That will become your U wave. Okay. So, yes, Krish Tarun, did you understand this? How to differentiate the U wave and as well as P wave? 
right now let me just summarize all the images what we have discussed right so the first image what we have discussed is about the liquorice and excessive consumption of this particular liquorice sticks will cause hypokalemic alkalosis why because liquorice contains a substance called glycerin this glycerin on excessive accumulation will have the action or will stimulate the cortisol release this cortisol in excess quantity will have action similar to that of aldosterone and that will cause sodium retention and potassium and h plus ion excretion so due to potassium and h plus ion excretion there will be hypokalemic alkalosis right so this is the take home message of this liquorice sticks next yeah the next question asked is about the coactation of iota so which among the following is not associated with the coactation of iota right down syndrome you don't have the coactation of iota in down syndrome whatever you have is av can all cushing defects and there can be vsd pda and tetralogy of fallot but in down syndrome you will not have the coactation of iota whereas in turners yes you can have the coactation of iota but not in case of the down syndrome hmm? but not in case of down syndrome okay next now the next question take home message is yeah father of medicine is very important right you should never make a mistake in this question he is none other than hippocrates right he is none other than hippocrates okay right and the another take home message of this particular question is that the individual is eliciting the hepatojugular reflex so for how much duration the hepatojugular reflex should be elicited that is for nearly around 10 to 15 seconds so what will happen if it is positive there will be sustained elevation of jvp for more than 3 cm for nearly around 10 to 15 seconds so that tells you it is right heart failure so that is about your positive hepatojugular reflex next now yes now the cvrt of this mitral stenosis how is it assessed we have two parameters number one the duration of the murmur number two a to os gap so these are the two parameters which will decide the cvrt of your mitral stenosis and lastly the last important take home message is about the ecg with qt prolongation so ecg with qt prolongation you will have this in hypocalcemia and qt prolongation is also seen in hypomagnesemia right hypomagnesemia right and this particular hypomagnesemia is the one which will cause the development of polymorphic ventricular tachycardia right which will cause the individual to land up in polymorphic ventricular tachycardia which is nothing but your torsades d pointis right torsades d pointis okay right now and this pdf you will get in you will get this on my uh, telegram channel that is medicine made easy by dr rajesh gupta so you can just medicine made easy by dr rajesh gupta so on this telegram channel you can get this particular pdf so please subscribe or you can just enter into my this channel of medicine made easy please join this channel where you will get the today's pdf and every day i will be conducting the image based questions which is very which are very important for your upcoming fmg exam right so thank you very much and i see you again at tomorrow 5 o'clock sharp to discuss many more image based questions thank you very much